Jose Jimenez was a pitcher in Major League Baseball for seven seasons from 1998 to 2004. He pitched for three teams, the St. Louis Cardinals, Colorado Rockies, and Cleveland Indians. A starting pitcher turned reliever, his career is about as average as one can get. Across over 300 games pitched and over 500 innings thrown, Jimenez went 24-44 and with a 4.92 ERA, 100 adjusted ERA, a 1.454 whip, and was worth 2.3 war. Those stats don't tell the whole story though, as despite lackluster numbers, Jimenez was a terrific relief pitcher for the Rockies. In four seasons as the Colorado closer from 2000 to 2003, he saved 102 games, including a high of 41 in 2002. During that four-year stretch, he threw 300 innings, recording a 4.13 ERA, 126 adjusted ERA, a 1.414 whip, and was worth 4.8 war. When you can put up those kinds of numbers in the pre-humidifier era of Coors Field, I'd say you had a pretty good run. Not to mention, his 41 saves was the Rockies franchise record for 15 years until it was broken by Wade Davis in 2018. This video, however, is not about his time in Colorado. It's about a sequence of games he had as a member of the St. Louis Cardinals during his rookie season in 1999. For as good as a relief pitcher he was, the opposite can be said about his time as a starting pitcher. In 1999, Jimenez started 28 games and pitched in 29 total, having an abysmal record of 5-14. He threw 163 innings, recording an ERA of 5.85, an adjusted ERA of 79, a whip of 1.497, and earned negative 0.5 war. There were 89 qualified pitchers in Major League Baseball that season, and Jimenez ranked 87th in adjusted ERA, 88th in war, and dead last in win-loss percentage. Arguably the worst starting pitcher in baseball that year, or at least in the bomb three. Despite the atrocious stats, Jimenez actually started the season off well. In his first three starts, he was 2-0 while throwing at least seven innings in each start and recording an ERA of 2.95. In the next 11 games following that start, 1-7 with an ERA of 8.04 across 59 and a third innings pitched. That brought his season ERA up to 6.69 with a lowly 3-7 record through his first 14 games started. I mentioned the first 14 starts because in his 15th start of the season on June 25th, Jimenez had to face the Arizona Diamondbacks on the road. What you may not know about the Diamondbacks that season is they were one of the best teams in the league. In fact, in 1999, Arizona's 100 wins was the second most, only behind the Atlanta Braves' 103. Not only did they win a lot, they also scored a lot. Their 5.60 run score per game on average was the most in the National League and third most in Major League Baseball. When a struggling pitcher has to go on the road to face one of the best hitting teams out there, right near the peak of the steroid era I might add, and it's a recipe for disaster. But wait, there's more. In addition to all of that, Jimenez's opponent that game was Randy Johnson. I am not going to go into detail about Randy Johnson, as you are well aware just how great he was during his career. Just know that, in 1999, Johnson won the Cy Young Award, the undisputed best pitcher in the National League that season, and without a doubt, the best pitcher in baseball period not named Pedro Martinez. So the task at hand for Jose Jimenez, you have an ERA over 8 in your last 11 starts. You now have to go on the road to face an offensive juggernaut while your opposing pitcher is one of the greatest of all time during his peak. What could go wrong, right? Well, as it turns out... Round ball, this could be it! The first no of the year, he's got it! Look at the reaction! Jose Jimenez defied all odds to no-hit the Arizona Diamondbacks, and I truly mean defied all odds. From the first at-bat he faced did we get a preview of what was to come, as Tony Womack lined out to left field for the first out in the first inning. It was a game of great defensive plays and saves. In the bottom of the second, third baseman Matt Williams hit a chopper to the left side that David Howard handled and nearly threw it wild, but Mark McGuire was able to scoop it up for the out. I must mention that this pick by McGuire was absolutely terrible. He didn't lean out for the ball like a first baseman should, but rather held up and let the ball come to him at an awkward angle. Regardless, he recorded the out, and that's four up and four down for Jimenez. In the fourth inning, Luis Gonzalez, who was batting 373 entering this game, 
fouled out to the catcher where the ball just barely managed to stay in play. Another few feet and that ball certainly would have gone into the stands and who knows how Gonzalez's at bat would have turned out. Leading off in the bottom of the sixth, Andy Fox line one to right field where Eric Davis made a fantastic diving play to keep the no hitter alive. In the very next at bat, Randy Johnson lined the ball to center field but Darren Bragg came on to make the shoestring catch. Two outstanding defensive plays in the outfield here in the sixth inning to keep the Diamondbacks without a hit. Entering the ninth inning, Jimenez had yet to allow a hit but Randy Johnson was just as sharp, keeping the Cardinals scoreless. For a team that finished the season under 500 that year, it would be a typical and disappointing game if St. Louis couldn't score a single run for Jimenez's brilliant performance. Well, in the ninth inning, the Cardinals put two runners on base with two outs for left fielder Thomas Howard. Howard, a lifetime platoon player who never had so much as 400 play appearances in a season during his 11 year career, was just making his ninth start of the season. 0 for 3 on the day entering this at bat, he worked the count full versus Randy Johnson. Howard then lined a broken bat single that just managed to fall in front of left fielder Luis Gonzalez for a hit. Mark McGuire was thrown out at third base on this play, but not before Darren Bragg raced across the plate to score the first run of the game. 1-0 St. Louis heading into the bottom of the ninth. With one out, outfielder David DeLucci came in to pinch hit for Randy Johnson. He lined the ball into right field where, for the second time this game, Eric Davis dove to make another terrific catch to save the no-hitter. As you just saw, the ball fell out of Davis' glove as he came to his feet in celebration. Despite the ball falling, the umpires on the field ruled Davis made the catch and it was an out. Arizona manager Buck Showalter came out to argue it shouldn't have been ruled an out, but it was unsuccessful. Replays show Davis clearly had caught the ball and came to his feet well before the ball fell out of his glove and touched the ground. In the next and final at bat, Tony Womack grounded out to second base to complete the no-hitter. In this game, Jimenez had 8 strikeouts, 2 walks, and only faced 1 batter over the minimum. At the time, it was just the 17th no-hitter ever thrown by a rookie. A rookie pitcher who was performing absolutely miserably all season, facing a powerhouse lineup with a legendary pitcher opposing him, managed to throw one of baseball's finest accomplishments. Everything had to go absolutely right for this to happen, from the remarkable defensive plays to the Cardinals hitters managing to scratch out a single run off Randy Johnson at the last possible moment. It's perhaps not only the unlikeliest no-hitter in MLB history, but the unlikeliest pitching performance ever, and then Jimenez did it again 10 days later. On July 5th, the Diamondbacks traveled to St. Louis this time to face the Cardinals. With Jimenez starting his second game following the no-hitter, he was once again tasked with facing Randy Johnson in this rematch. Now, I must mention, in the game following the no-hitter, Jimenez allowed 7 earned runs in 4 and a third innings pitched against the Houston Astros, taking the loss. Certainly, his no-hitter against Arizona was a pure fluke, and he couldn't replicate the performance again, right? While Jimenez would not throw another no-hitter, he was still lights out. He threw another complete game shutout, limiting Arizona to just two hits, a double in the fifth inning and a single in the sixth inning. The Cardinals once again only managed one run off Randy Johnson, a fourth inning RBI single by Thomas Howard, the same man who drove in the only run in the no-hitter. Howard had 264 RBIs in his career, including only 56 for St. Louis, but it is without a doubt those two are the biggest ones in his life. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, Jimenez would finish the season with a 5-14 record and an ERA of 5.85. If we take out his two starts versus the Diamondbacks, he was 3-14 with an ERA of 6.58. Just two games managed to bring down his ERA nearly three quarters of a run. The fact that Jimenez limited Arizona to two hits and zero runs across 18 innings will probably be the greatest and unlikeliest performance a player ever had against a single team. In case anyone was wondering, these two games were the only complete games of his career. And to further show just how unlikely these two starts were, Jimenez started 38 games in his career. Of those 38, these two are the only starts where he allowed zero runs. He had plenty of scoreless outings out of relief, but in games he started, these two are it. In 1999, the St. Louis Cardinals finished the year in 4th place with a 75-86 and record. In the midst of a forgettable season were two unbelievable pitching performances by rookie pitcher Jose Jimenez. A no-hitter and a two-hit shutout, both against the best offensive team in the National League. 
For somebody struggling beyond belief to completely shut down a team that good twice in the span of 10 days is remarkable. We may never see a set of performances like that ever again.